everyone. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are in the world today. Thank you for your time. We'll get started in just a few moments. But in the meantime, I'm curious to know what software are you currently using to register UAS data? We'll give it a few more seconds for people to sign in and vote, and then we'll get started. And it looks like we have a fair mix of software being utilized to process and register data. It's pretty evenly distributed, actually, I'm surprised. Excellent. A little bit about myself. My name is Mylynn Trong, and I've been with Regal for nearly 10 years, wearing lots of hats. First diving deep into LiDAR data processing, and then taking over as our training and support manager for kinematic systems. And with the emergence of the commercial UAS marketplace, I finally transitioned to my current role as our unmanned laser scanning business segment manager for North America. Today I will be presenting on Regal UAS LiDAR from RIE Acquire Embedded to RIE Process, our steps to success software workflow from start to finish. Now, before we start, please note at the bottom of your screen that there's a question box. Please feel free to add in your questions during the session, and I'll do my very best to answer all of them at the end. It's not just fun and games flying a UAV. To quote Mission Impossible, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to collect quality LiDAR and optional camera data to obtain your end deliverables, whatever that may be, which is dependent on your application. So, what are the steps to an overall successful UAS LiDAR mission? There's project or mission planning. And then during your data collection, what are your acquisition methodologies? Are you applying an appropriate static alignment to get a solid GNSS positional lock, as well as dynamic alignment to excite the IMU and GNSS system pre and post data capture? during your data processing workflow to georeference the data? Are you incorporating your system calibration parameters and ensuring that those are applied, which would be your scanner to IMU rotation matrices, accurate lever arm calculations between the scanner and IMU and the GNSS antenna and IMU, as well as those boresight angles, and during the data adjustment and registration process, for relative accuracy, the process to align the collected data to itself, absolute accuracy, the alignment of the collected data to your ground control objects, and the optional colorization process, should you have co-captured camera imagery with your LiDAR. This offers an additional attribute to your point cloud. And then finally, your data export. These are your file formats needed to perform further data analytics and feature extraction to create your end deliverables. RIE Parameter is a tool that Regal offers to determine the optimized parameters of your aerial laser scanning system based on your project planning and flight planning needs. It is a freeware, so there's no license that's required or for purchase. And this tool is offered in two formats. We offer a command line application for direct integration into your own software development or in a graphical user interface, which I'll show in just a moment. It's common practice to base your mission planning on either the nominal point spacing or on the overall point density for the project, which is usually measured in points per square meter. Now, in order to acquire the optimal data from your sensor, in other words, with the best point distribution of the measurements on the ground, this spatial sampling pattern depends on quite a few factors. Depends on your overall ground speed and height above ground, these two features are impacted by your aircraft that's used and its mission parameters. For example, a fixed wing aircraft can operate faster than multi-rotor. 
So even if you use the same sensor on both platforms, your output can be different. The laser pulse repetition rate of that sensor, the field of view setting or additional restriction of field of view that can be applied to that scanner, as well as the overall scan speed of that scanner. The scanning device of the LiDAR is a continuously rotating polygon mirror wheel, which results in a regular and evenly spaced point pattern of each single scan line or flight strip. We call that our matrix scan pattern, unless it's the Minibux 1DL and it's a circular scan pattern. But this, coupled with the field of view of the scanner, will impact your side lap calculations for your overall data coverage of your site. For example, the VUX-1 UAV and the longer range VUX-1 LR are inherently 330 degrees field of view, but we offer a firmware upgrade to enable that full 360 field of view if that's of interest. Whereas the mini VUX-1 UAV and two UAV models are inherently a full 360 degrees. So these model types all excel at wide area mapping applications. However, our downward looking Minibux 1DL, as I mentioned, has a circular scan pattern of a 46 degree field of view, and the higher performance of the VUX 240 offers a 75 degree field of view. These two sensor types are optimized for corridor mapping ap applications. Within RI parameter is the ability to define your aircraft, UAV, or even modify the predefined aircrafts that are lift, listed. These models could be multi-rotors, such as quadcopters like the DJI Phantom 4 or the new um, M300, hexcopters like the DJI Matri 600 Pro, or octocopters like, of course, our Regal Rycopter UAV. There's single rotor aircrafts, helicopter configuration, as well as fixed wing or plane configurations. All of these aircrafts have their own minimum and maximum speed performance specifications and maximum altitude that it can operate at. Understanding the performance and movement characteristics of these UAV types will assist you in determining the flight parameters that are most appropriate for your LiDAR system. The RI parameter interface is divided into three categories. The input section, the output section, and ultimately a visualization of the type of point spacing that you can obtain. The input tab enables you to select your Regal Aerial Scanner model and define the project type and requirements, such as your terrain, your flight height constraints, surface or target type. This is in particular really helpful for ensuring that the small wire gauges are captured for utility management, and of course your aircraft type. Aircraft type. Once the input is defined, the results or your output will populate. Shown here is an example for wide area mapping for the VUX-1 UAV for the optimized configuration showing the scanner settings at the max 550 kilohertz pulse repetition rate, your overall flight parameters, your scan pattern, and the ultimate output rate for multiple time around enabled systems, it may show how many MTA zones you're flying through. In this scenario, it's only one, and the productivity or data rate for your storage calculation. For visualization of this wide area mapping example, you can see the swath width of the data capture and any varying terrain with an even point distribution. As I mentioned regarding the multiple time around zones or MTA zones, in these other mission examples, 
flying at a higher altitude. If you notice in the middle image, you can see where the possible MTA zone bands would be that the scanner would be capturing the data through. Once your mission is planned, next is to go and capture your project. By taking your Regal LiDAR system, data acquisition is through RyQuire Embedded. You'll then transform and extract the raw LiDAR data through SDC import, georeference that through RyWorld, and all of this is managed through Ry process as the visualization, adjustment and registration of the data to itself, the application of ground control, colorization, and ultimately exporting your precise and georeference point cloud into your feature extraction and further analytics that you'll take care of in your third-party software. As the name suggests, Rye Acquire is Regal's acquisition software platform. We offer the software or GUI interface through an acquisition laptop for airborne systems and a touchscreen monitor for our mobile laser systems. But ultimately, we offer Rye Acquire Embedded, which is our firmware or script version that is running on board the UAV LiDAR system itself. This is controlled all of the data capture through the PWM signal. RyeQuire is a key tool for our kinematic data acquisition, which provides features and tools throughout all of the stages of data acquisition. The system integration is there, sensor configuration that is applied from your mission plan, your system ground checks that are performed pre-flight, your system and data monitoring for information as you're collecting the data, and ultimately project exporting. In addition, the acquisition project file will directly convey when opening in Rye process, and that offers you the ability to transition directly to the next stage in your workflow. Rye Acquire Embedded for UAS work will trigger your entire payload. So that's the LiDAR, the IMU, GNSS, and the cameras. There's also the option to enable the auto start working and logging feature, which enables a fully automatic start of the scanning system and upon boot up so that there's no additional need to trigger specifically through the UAV transmitter or your ground station. We also have the ability to enable the motion action shutdown, which you can activate an automatic shutdown procedure. And this is detected by the speed of the overall system as it's slowing down. And when that is triggered, then the system will start the process to power down safely after a user defined time. So this is typically after your dynamic alignment and after you've landed your UAV safely. So that will take care of the static alignment process. And then after that's completed, at the end of the acquisition, it will automatically shut down and then you can go ahead and power down your UAV. After data acquisition from Rye Acquire, you'll take the raw data to extract it through SDC import marry the LiDAR data with the post-process trajectory or your SBET file through RyWorld, and this provides your georeference point cloud. Performing an analysis of the LiDAR and quality of the trajectory information through RyPrecision, this algorithm will produce an improved trajectory file, which will then offer a more precise and georeference point cloud to export for your data analytics. Now you'll notice that SDC import Rye World and Rye Precision all take place within Rye Process. And this is because not only is Rye Process the user interface for Regal Data Processing and calling the other Regal Processing tasks in the background, but it also serves as the project or system manager 
And as mentioned, the project file from Rye Acquire Embedded will directly convey over to Rye Process. And this is important because within Rye Process is the project merge wizard. And this is really useful for project areas that in order to cover the entire site, you have to perform multiple missions to collect over in, in that day or even over a course of multiple days from the same LiDAR system. Now, also you have the option of merging projects from multiple systems. If you had a fleet of UAS LiDAR, so perhaps these LiDAR systems were operating in parallel to reduce your overall field time. And even the ability for data fusion, if you were to merge data from your unmanned laser system and Regal's Mobile's laser scanning systems together. Also embedded in Rye Process is RxP Cutter, which as the name suggests, cuts your master RxP file. And that master file is created um, in the event that you're implementing that auto start working logging feature in Rye Acquire Embedded, and you're essentially capturing everything from the ground up. This saves you time in the field, less error, but during post-processing, you can define your individual flight lines of your intended data to use, and it will automatically just cut your records and splice them. After merging the project mission, your trajectory file, using RxP Cutter to splice your flight lines, it's easy to queue up your three processing tasks to extract, georeference, and then visualize your point cloud. So once the data has been initially processed and it's time to, to visualize your data, now what? How do you assess the overall accuracy of the data that you've captured? The laser scanner itself, highly accurate, precise. The system calibration, all the lever arms, precise. But depending on the platform, the integration onto the platform, the IMU GNSS solution that's integrated, the satellite constellation configuration at the time of data capture, PDOP spikes, if you happen to capture an unfortunate time, all of this information, this solution of that trajectory model may place your data further away than it truly is expected to be. Unfortunately, you are only as strong as your weakest link. However, the algorithms within Rye Precision not only takes the point cloud features, the correspondence of these features, you know, if you fly over the building 10 times, you shouldn't have 10 of the buildings, should be one building, the accuracy of the laser scanner itself and the trajectory, if you have optional ground control objects you want to import in, it will read that information as well. And all of this will determine and model a refined trajectory file. This process is fully automatic, it's fast, and it ultimately offers a precisely aligned and georeferenced point cloud. So how do we use this? Now we have algorithms optimized for data parameters specifically for UAV applications for mobile laser scanning platforms and our higher altitude airborne laser scanning systems. The principle is all the same, it's just clicking the particular buttons. And in this case, we have the option to define what we want to adjust, reference, and ignore. If you happen to have merged multiple missions together, you can select to adjust that, reference it if you've already exported out your data from the day before, and that's on to the feature extraction work, or you've got too many missions in your project and you don't care about certain ones, you can go ahead and ignore that particular piece of information. And an example of a wide area mapping project that happens to be one square kilometer or approximately 250 acres flying the VUX-1 UAV and capturing 40 scan lines, the entire data set took 25 minutes to register 
after implementing or by implementing Rye Precision UAV. In this extreme example of misalignment of 30 centimeters, by running Rye Precision UAV, you can see just how more tightly aligned the data becomes at two centimeters offset. Taking a closer look by cutting a cross section or profile over some rail tracks that's in this area. Before adjusting, you can see how the individual flight passes are visible. But after adjustment, it is tightly meshed together. Once you've registered, georeferenced, and colorized your point cloud, you'll have something that looks like this which is seen here. This is a colorized LiDAR point cloud of Regal USA's new headquarters that's under construction, captured with our Minivox system, mounted onto the DJI Matrice 600 Pro and utilizing the Integration Kit 600. Now, I didn't showcase the data colorization workflow because stay tuned, this workflow within Rye Process will be showcased in next month's webinar series. After all this, it's time to export, and we support a wide variety of formats. LAS 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1 with and without waveform. Of course, our Regal database file, RDB. This file format is also offers you the ability to import the file directly into RiceCan Pro for Regal da data fusion between our terrestrial laser scanning systems and our kinematic systems. And with this, you have the ability, or with all of these, you have the ability of exporting additional attributes such as your RGB values, if you colorize your point cloud within Rye Process, your target types. Uh, for example, if you're looking to do a bare earth model, you don't need the full point cloud in a heavily vegetated area. You could simply select your single and last returns. We also offer the ability to export out our regal extra bytes within the LAS file format. And we believe that adding this valuable information, additional information provided by our laser scanners to each and every data point in the point cloud will provide a useful benefit for further processing and analytics of your overall LiDAR point cloud. Not only is the intensity information of each data point is exported, but also the amplitude, reflectance, and pulse shape deviation. If you have camera data co-captured with your LiDAR system, you have the ability to export your georeference imagery as well in either JPEG or GeoTIFF format. You have additional information that can be applied as well, which such as ensuring that your image is undistorted and you have the ability to output your image list in a format that is fully supported by your third-party software analytics. As I mentioned, I invite you to join my colleague Stephen Macyon on Wednesday, August 19th from 2 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, where he will dive deep into our camera options that we offer with our UAV mounted LiDAR systems and how to colorize your point cloud from the data that is co-captured. You can find our full list of August webinar series at the registration link in our Regal newsroom as well as on our LinkedIn page or you can feel free to email us directly. And with that, thank you so much and Let's see what sort of questions we have. Yes, um, at, we will be releasing, as we've been doing the last months, the previous month's webinar series on our Regal Video Lab on YouTube. I have a question on when the new headquarters will be done. We hope, I've been told, you know, we've been told that it is slated for November of this year. I really hope that's still true. Uh, <laughs> and 
it'll be really exciting to go into 2021 in our new building, which we have a dedicated website, www.ultimatelidar.com, showcasing the usage of our UAB data and the Minibucks SIS data, as well as our terrestrial LIDAR, our VZ400i, monitoring the entire construction process. So if you're interested in construction, definitely check out that website. Then I have a question on Ryacquire, on whether Ryacquire gives the user control over any camera system that is associated with the scanner. So within Ryacquire, you have the ability to configure um, and trigger one or multiple cameras. And once those are configured and enabled, then during acquisition, then those particular cameras will trigger as well. That is all the questions I have for today. If you have any further questions, if you think about them, go ahead and email me directly. Thank you so much for your time today and see you next time. Stay safe.